Good afternoon. You may be surprised why civil engineer talk about uh, cancer, but wait until the end of the, <laughs> of the presentation. So, what I'm going to address here is the work that I did and I've been doing is the cancer treatment and a cancer of progression. What I mean by progression, the growth of the cancer and new blood vessels generation or angiogenesis and spread, invasion, uh, invasion and metastasis. All these, by the way, concentrating on one part of the cancer, which is the mechanics of the cancer. As far as the treatment, I will discuss the mechanics in radiotherapy. As you know, radiotherapy is one of the widely used cancer treatment. However, it has to be accurate in order to avoid any damage to the healthy tissues. So that's why we call it conformal treatment. The process after diagnosis, the patient goes through a planning stage, which takes a lot of imaging, and then it goes to treatment with very limited information on the spatial or the place of the tumor. And this goes for the regular radiotherapy, it goes for five to six weeks on the daily basis. The problem that we treat the same planned area the whole course of the treatment. This is the traditional way of doing it. So in the planning stage, for example, in the case of the lung, where it's during the breathing, where we have 4 DCT, and we have PET, we have MRI, and we put them together in order to find the exact location of the tumor. What happened next, we send the patient to the treatment. Now there is um, a technology, which we call it image-guided radiotherapy, where this is the machine of radiotherapy. We put a very low-cost comb beam CT and very low resolution that you see here. So you, it's good, you can see the bones, you can see the lungs, but not everything that you have in mind. For example, in the case of the liver, it's very difficult to find. So we get this information of the planning and we incorporate the very, very limited information that we have during the treatment using the x-ray to create a mechanical model to see the exact location of the tumor and then we adjust the patient location. So we use image registration. For those who work in image registration, there are a number of techniques. For example, you get the rigid image registration where we can translate the image, i.e. matching the images by saying, or we can stretch it in all direction in the same way. However, if we have sad face and we want it to match it to the smiley face here, it would be difficult. So we have a deformable deformation that cannot be addressed with the rigid registration. So what we have to do? We have to go to something else. I mentioned here probably a brain is, is good because it's confined and we need only rigid image registration. It's, it's not true actually. Even the brain is moving. And so deformable image registration is required. As engineer, we look at the physics of the material and we want to include it. Instead of using a number of techniques, deformable image registration used, uh, such as a fluid and so on, where we model the lung as a fluid. Here, no, we model the lung as lung. Uh, what they call it rubber-like material, so we use rubber-like material. We take the image and then inhale and exhale. We transfer it to, to make long story short, to transfer it to finite element modeling where we have all the deformation and applied displacement on the lung in this case. And we include bronchial tree, we include uh, parenchyma, the real, the real tissue of the, of the lung. And also we model the sliding sliding between the lung and the chest cavity using the contact mechanics that engineers are, are uh, 
Good at. So we transfer this to finite element modeling, and what we are after? We are after this red dangerous tumor, and we want to find its location. Here we get, for example, a number of patients with a different location of the tumor, and we want to find where is it during breathing so that we can apply the radiotherapy to the right location. And we are very good in reducing the error by almost more than 40% in order to get the right location of the tumor. We applied for lungs, we applied for livers. Livers is, uh, you see here a number of patients with a number of uh, tumors in the liver. And we model kidneys, spleen, and uh, even the stomach, and we want to see what's happening. So here is uh, the liver, and with the blood vessels, we want to track the location of the tumor. We did it with the head and neck. Head and neck is difficult area where a number of glands are surrounding or confined in a very limited space. And if you hit this by in radiotherapy, for example, parotid gland, it will uh, reduce the saliva production and therefore it would be very difficult and affect the life quality of patients. So here the tumor, the little guy here, hiding between the uh, uh, bone structures and glands and here the larynx we want to avoid as well. And we did it for mammogram. This is mainly actually not for a treatment, it's rather for than the prediction of or the density of a breast and the prediction of the possibility of cancer. Then I move further to what else? This is for a treatment. Now, mechanics can be a part of the growth and also uh, angiogenesis and spread. So the tumor here has no a vascular, we call it a vascular, no blood supply, and it grows, and as much as it grows, it grows to two millimeter before if there is no supply of uh, oxygen and nutrition. As it grows, what you create, you create a very difficult situation where it press on the blood supply. So this is part of it. And if you have a lack of oxygen, then the tumor screens some material called TAF, and it encourage the encourage the the vessel to supply or to create new ones. And this new vessels will be created, and the problem with these new vessels are leaky, and they are not good in supplying the blood. And therefore, we use soil mechanics. We're we are part of the civil engineering, and we can use solid and fluid mechanics in order to address this and how the, the vessel moves forward. And as we move to the angiogenesis, then there is another problem, which is 90% 90 of our death, cancer death, is related to something what we call it metastasis. And the metastasis, oh, I want to show you this because I spent time on this. <laughs> so this, this one here move in the blood supply and goes to <laughs> and goes to a specific area where it where it phase fluid mechanics interaction and also sticking and all these contact mechanics. With that, I will thank you for your listening. Yes, please. Uh, how do you obtain the uh, values of the mechanical properties of those uh, stiffness uh, that you enter in the model? An excellent question. And this we rely normally on animal tissues. And I was lucky to find uh, uh, samples of a human tissue being tested in 1987 for the lungs. So this is. This is ex vivo, dead tissue. 
this is a very active area. Actually, one of my projects now is to test the in vivo patient-specific material property. So this is work in progress as well. But it's a very valid question. Because uh, there are some uh, work, more work in development, more, more than work in development, because it's uh, the liberalizing of the, uh, <coughs> the medical test. Yes. Uh, using the ultrasounds in USA. Yes. We actually there uh, discriminate the uh, cancer of tumors from the uh, stiffness, and they, they come with quite high resolution. So I think they, they have some way to access the actual value of the very much the case. So this is what we call elastography, whether it is US, I mean ultrasound or MRI elastography. So this is one part and they are working on it. And you're right, it's, it's very active research. As civil engineer, we want to have direct measurement, but we need it in vivo. Okay, great, thank you. Thanks. <coughs>